This is a surviving, last surviving rose bush that was on this property before I bought it in 1997. <clears throat> it was in a different location and I moved it and it's it's I've I've moved it several times and all this growth is new this one grew last year off of it and all this growth is new new for this year and there used to be a whole bunch of rose bushes and one by one they died same thing with lilac bushes and here's a, here's a hollyhock that I uh, I'll say about 15 years ago I intentionally tried to grow hollyhocks from seed with not very good results and I think I got a total of three plants but those if you know hollyhocks they produce a crap load of seeds and they those seeds must have got spread all over the property because I've got them growing all over I don't have to do nothing and uh, I even had have some growing underneath a old barbecue <laughs> that's been in I don't know I don't know how the seeds got there these are my red onions that if you watch my short videos these red onions sprouted off of a three foot tall onion that I allowed to grow for almost three years and it developed a flower what they call bolting and they always tell you oh, don't let your vegetables bolt and I always let them bolt because that's how I get seeds they just want you to buy more seeds well you just leave one to to bolt and you man I've got so many seeds but these if you go all the way back like to September of last year to see my short videos these sprouted out of the flower and at first I thought it was like a fungus like ergot in wheat and barley but they kept getting bigger and then they the little onion bulbs formed and I was like well there's little onions growing out out of this flower so I picked them off and plant oh I planted them in September and you can see that that's a short video I have of picking them off the flower and planting them so they grew over the winter which root plants seem to handle the cold winter here in my part of Idaho pretty good so I bet you I could probably already pick some and eat them but then these are some of my garlics that I had to transplant because I have dozens of them I uh, my middle daughter gave me a bag of garlic bulbs and I just threw them in the ground in March and they're growing like crazy and I forget what this is called <laughs> but I've been transplanting these from the original the original one of this plant for years and not all of them survive this one has it's actually doing really well and I thought the original I had dug up all the original plant because I thought it was in a I thought it was in a bad area and it's in the shade most of the time anyway so I 
but no it's 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 come back it's at uh, in another place in that anyway so let's just move on here and so our weather has been unusually cool I would say even cold it's still getting cold at night uh, normally this time of year I've already got my doors my back door and my windows on my house open at night to cool the house down but not this year it's too cold at night well the kind of the wild grasses and wildflowers and other plants the, this is a section of my yard that I call my mountain meadow landscaping because I just let things grow wild and they've gone nuts this year because these kind of plants like the cooler weather weather we've had more rain than usual we had more snow than what we had in the past 15 years and Idaho has been in a drought for a while and uh, anyway so this year they've gone nuts and I have finally started cutting them down only so I could see the plant. But anyway so like this is this is a little area where I grow peppers and tomatoes and cilantro and you can see there I gotta clear these things out now the cilantros many years ago you know I just let them go to seed so they're every year I they'll sprout on their own from the seeds that were, so you know I don't have to do much except clear this stuff out so they can grow. and I keep for I forgot what this is called but this is uh I was told it's not native to the US or North America and uh, see these it grows seeds that look like pepper seeds that what you get in a pepper fruit they look just like pepper seeds and they are do have a peppery taste and you can eat them you can eat them and uh, but they're, I guess they're considered a weed. But you see how well they're growing here? <laughs> Normally when left on their own, they don't get this big. They only get like maybe four inches, you know, maybe, maybe this tall out in the wild. And most people, you don't even, <laughs> unless you're looking for them, you don't even see them out in the wild because they're, so short and scrawny and but uh, a few years ago I intentionally watered three I, I picked three and intentionally watered them to see how big they would get and they got huge they got three and a half feet tall by about one of them got I swear it was four feet in diameter. It was. I used to call them Star Trek plants. Because they have like a science fiction y look. Like some of the plants that you see on the original Star Trek show. And uh, Lost in Space. And this is a butterfly bush. Actually, this is off of. Uh, I had a butter there was a butterfly bush just like that other that vine plant butterfly bushes are supposed to be in the full sun the original owners had planted it in the shade and anyway so I transplanted I dug it up dug the original one up and when it got out of the ground it it just I guess uh, its own weight it the root system broke into three separate sections on its own. So I transplanted it, and uh, this looks like it's dead, but sometimes these things are still green. But anyway, see, it's, it's growing. 
But again, it it doesn't like the cooler weather, and we like right now. It's it was sunny and warm a little earlier today, and now it's cloudy, and the wind is cold, and these kind of plants like sun and heat. And, uh, and here's these things. Let me see. I don't know what it is. Look how small these flowers. But I let them grow wild. <clears throat> but in the in the heat of summer, the plant starts drying up and it starts to get little stickery things on it. But right now, it's I don't know what it is, but I think they I like the way they look. And here's a lilac tree that I transplanted now this part died but what a lot of people don't know is the root systems will stay alive for a long time for years so it put out this new growth and it came from this one this one was so huge that a few years ago I decided to split it up and this this section here was where that part of the tree was and you can see it's got all kinds of new growth now I got columbines growing these make like a star shaped flower that I think is neat and here's a tulip and there's an iris, but uh, normally I trim these, trim all these uh, suckers, and I decide to let them, let most of them grow, because the tree is spreading, and this this part is really old. It was here when I bought the house in '97, so. I'm just gonna let some of these suckers grow. I'm gonna clear some of those out so the columbines can get more sun and whatever. And then here's this. This is an aspen tree. Off of the, they grow off the roots. But I discovered, see there's the parent tree which is now dead. But that was off of another aspen tree that was in another part of the yard when I moved here and that tree died but it had all kinds of growth coming and it was in a bad location so it was next to the driveway so I moved a bunch of them out here dug up the roots and and at that time I didn't know that aspen trees are just as bad about needing to be watered as lawn grass Ugh. Ooh, I don't know. So, here's another one. And, uh, yeah, aspens are not good if you're trying to save water. And here's another butterfly bush. Growing new growth. Oh, then I got this. This is a baby pine tree that's been here for <laughs> at least 15 years. It was planted as a seedling and just won't grow any more than that. It's like it's a dwarf. Anyway, and then this area here with all the grass and everything now, this was this is my corn patch where I plant corn. So I got to get that cleared out so I can plant some corn and every year because it seems like every year has been cooler and cooler I plant things later and later <laughs> and I still I still got a bunch of corn last year another hollyhock that grew on its own and there's a that's a baby plum tree and then uh, 
Another hollyhock. There's some more of my garlics. Crap load of tulips and more irises and more hollyhocks. And this is where I originally tried starting them. Now I can't stop them. And there's more tulips and there's more garlics. <laughs> and I was chopping, chopping this grass. This is a baby pear tree that started growing a few years ago. And then uh, I've got, this is my potato patch. I threw a bunch of potato, at least a dozen potatoes in there in March. And it looks like there's only one potato plant growing right now but that's okay cuz I'll tell you a secret a lot of Idahoans don't really like potatoes uh, mm, don't tell anybody and, <laughs> so see I've been I've been chopping away at this stuff this is a apple tree man it's taking forever to get this it's more than 15 years old something wrong there <laughs> but I, I'm suspecting it has something to do with the solar maximum certain plants don't like the intensity of the Sun but others like like all that grass the wild grass they love it and here's another butterfly bush there's some growth on it that was why I, I totally forgot about this and it was being smothered by all the grass. <laughs> I thought it was dead, but I saw the growth there. And, and here's one, here's a lilac that last year I thought it had died. Uh, Cause see, here's the growth, new growth. But last year, all the leaves that were on here fell off before the end of summer. So I, I thought it was a goner because of the gophers. The gophers got it, I thought, but nope, it's coming back. And I know there's a, I know I got a baby plum tree under there somewhere. <laughs> I'll find it when I clear this all out. In this area here, I used to have a greenhouse, but it wasn't a greenhouse that used plastic sheeting. I thought, oh, that's cheap. Oh, so I spent a lot of money and got plastic paneling and two by four framing. And then about five, six years ago, we had some freak hail storms in the middle of summer. And it just smashed the crap out of my plastic paneling, and they were expensive. I was like, "Shit, I ain't gonna do. I ain't gonna, you know, whatever." By then, I also found out that a lot of stuff I was growing, I didn't really want anyway. I want to eat it and. I just like the stuff that I can throw on the ground and it grows on its own. Like, here's another lilac. See, this part looks dead, but the root is still alive. But these lilacs, their cuttings grow even easier than, you know, that's another plum, little plum tree. Here's, this is a lilac. This is the cutting that I did a few years ago. And this is new growth this year coming off of the root. Which tells me that the root is well established and big enough. And this is just off of a cutting, off of the branch. And then over here is my a lot of people in the U.S. call it a Russian olive tree. It's a wild olive tree. And I got this out of the Arco Desert. It was out there all by itself. It was not even this tall. It was just, I was out there just exploring and I was like, oh, it looks so by itself. <laughs> 
And then I realize Russian olive trees are the opposite of those stupid aspen trees that require so much water. Russian olive trees don't need very much water at all. And it's, which makes you wonder why so many, there's a lot of states that have all, all um, you know, declared, declared this to be a uh, noxious weed. And my own uh, research as to why revealed to me that it has a lot to do with the cattle industry. There was a time, like in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where they truly thought that uh, they wanted open grassland. And they felt like the more open grassland, the more cows they could put on it. And trees were bad because trees took up space. Also, they thought that uh, there were certain trees and plants that cows couldn't eat. And is why, like, did you know here in Idaho, thistle plants are a noxious weed? And if anybody likes artichokes, artichokes are thistles. And when I looked it up the reasoning for that law, uh, it said that you can't eat this, they're not edible. Oh, and the cows can't eat. I was like, bull crap. People eat thistle with the artichokes. And in Scotland, they eat, they're saying, these are some chives. Somebody gave me a, a potted chive almost 20 years ago, and I just put it in the ground over here next to this shed slash doghouse, and uh, this is where it's at now, almost 20 years later. That's a tulip. So I've got plenty of chive and see, I don't know if you can see the seeds in there yet, but anyway, I like to let things go to seed because that's less work for me. Here's an iris. Oh, I have to ex explain about my iris. That's another long story. Oh, these are mints. These are called I found out they're called chocolate mints, not because they taste like chocolate, but be the stems will turn chocolate brown. And the, you know, people are used to the spearmint type of mints, which have a spear shape, spear tip shape leaf. But these were on the property when I bought it in 1997 along with spearmints and here's my little plum tree forest all these all these plum trees grew on their own from the fruit that dropped off of the original tree was over there but it died it was at least 40 years old but you know, good hardwood. I see my some of my short videos I like to smoke my smoke some meats. Yeah. And there's a baby. Uh, that's that's an, uh, that thing's at least 15 years old. I don't know what's wrong with it. There was another one. It died. And there's that one. That one keeps dying and coming back. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then I got this one here that has only produced two fruits. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Uh oh, it looks like the wind blew some trash in them. But those are, those are all lilac cuttings. It wasn't very hard to grow them. Oh, but my iris, I guess I'll, I'll try to, so I had a bunch of irises, but they were up in my, 
Got a lot of ladybugs this year. But that's because last year we were all the trees were hit with aphids. And now there's a lot of ladybugs, but no aphids. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the these irises were originally in my front yard next to the mailbox, which was next to the street. And uh, we didn't have sidewalks. And we had our own individual mailbox. Uh, anyway, so in 2017, the city decided we're going to get sidewalks and we're going to lose our individual mailboxes and go to the neighborhood cluster boxes. So, um, those irises, see, there's more of them. And these have exploded. I've actually dug up buckets full of these and given them away. And, uh, anyway, so originally these were in the front yard next to my mailbox which also had a tree growing next to it which anyway so the city comes in and says oh you're gonna have sidewalks and you can't have individual mailbox anymore and they start digging up our front yards well before they got to my house I dug up the original irises and transplanted them back here in my backyard and they've just exploded they were, like I said I give away I've given away bucket Fools. and this is the most irises I've had in this spot since I've transplanted them they're just man this is a, there's a there's a hollyhock here's another one this hollyhock this hollyhock is at least five years old it has stayed green through winter it's the little stump or trunk it's huge but anyway so that's that's a tour of my the area of my yard that I <coughs> call my mountain meadow landscaping and where I also grow some of my vegetables alrighty that's it for now I guess oh yeah so you'll be able to check in I'll do a video for after I clear all my my corn patch and my pepper and tomato and cilantro patch and all that.